Good morning. I feel like I've already done this one time this morning. But we welcome everyone to our inside service. I have a few quick announcements. Today at 4 o'clock we will have our prayer closet, but it won't be in the closet. It will be in here in the sanctuary so we can do our social distancing and wear our mask. So we invite everyone to come out today at 4 o'clock and be a part of that prayer hour. Wednesday we've made a decision. We talked about it in church council Thursday, so I apologize it's not in your newsletter. But we will start meeting inside on Wednesday night. Poor pastor, last Wednesday when he got up to preach at 7 o'clock, it was 87 degrees. So we talked about it, and he talked to some of the others who are participating on Wednesday night, and everyone agreed it's time to come inside. So we will meet inside in the sanctuary, but the time has been changed back to 6.30. This will allow the pastor to have that special time of prayer. He'll try to start the Bible study by 7, so we will go Facebook Live at 7. So if you're unable to come Wednesday night, you can still catch us on Facebook, and that Facebook Live will start at 7, but we will meet at 6.30 for that special time of prayer. So please spread the word because it didn't get out to everyone. Wednesday nights will be inside. Tuesday is we have our first fundraiser meeting. We're going to meet together and discuss our plans for our fall fundraiser. Not sure what that's going to look like yet, so we're going to have open discussion. Tuesday nights, we invite everyone to come out and sort of help us come up with a plan that's going to work for everyone. So that is Tuesday at 6.30. And if you didn't hear already, we have voted and moved homecoming will be November 1st. We've got some exciting news coming about that. It may end up being more than just a one-day event. So look in your mailbox. We'll have more information coming. But go ahead and mark your calendar. Let friends and family know that homecoming will be November 1st. And we are actually celebrating 100 years of the chapel across the street, and that is wonderful. Grace Moments, it will be um, September the 24th. We have a special night planned. Ladies, if you missed it last month, you missed a treat. We had a wonderful time. We meet here in the sanctuary so we can still, again, do our social distancing, but we're going to do a craft this time. There's a really neat article about it in your newsletter, so we invite everyone to come for Grace Moments. Help us spread the words, ladies. We need a time for just ourselves, and this is a wonderful ministry. We've got a few gifts we're going to do this morning, but first, before we do that, I hope everyone had the opportunity to see the kids' talent show online. That was awesome. Those kids are talented. So we have a few gifts, and Pastor Stan is going to help us give these out. For participating in the talent show, we've got Case and Lupo. Case and where are you at? Come get, you, come get your prize. If you missed it, I think it's still up. You can go back and look at it. It's on the Church Children's Ministry Facebook. And if y'all missed it, you need to go see Kaysen because he did the pogo stick like mad crazy. Laura Kelly, but she's not here. We'll save that and give that to her. Ryan Desipati. And then we've got Evan Desipati. They were singing and playing the drums. I had to watch that drum thing about two or three times. That was really good. So if y'all missed it, take a moment and go back and watch that today. So thank you for that. And then also down here in the blue bags, a month before last, we highlighted in our newsletter our health care workers and our educational people. We are so blessed. And, yeah. We were so blessed to have so many in our church. And these two professions have been really hit hard during the COVID-19. Our nurses changed like overnight and were just faced with so many challenges and things that they were not prepared for, but they did it wonderfully. And during all this, they still took care of their families and kept their family members safe. And so that was a lot of stress. But our teachers went from Friday to Monday going to e-learning. No preparation, something that had not been done, and our teachers excelled in that. They did a wonderful job of finishing out the year in e-learning. Spent all summer trying to figure out how the school year was going to look. A lot of stress. But they did it still with such great character. And we've prayed over them continuously through the summer. We ask that you continue to pray over them because the students will start back, on, I think, on September the 8th is when school starts back. Virtually starts September 8th. So still continue to pray for our educational people because that is a lot of stress on them. I mean, they're educating our children, and they're trying to do this over the computers. is not always an easy task, and our professional workers. So we've got gifts, and these are gifts from the church just to let them know that we love and appreciate them. And there should be names on the front. Stanley, if you'll hold them up, I'll call.
First one is Jason Isgit. Jason makes teachers' lives much easier in this time of year, especially with all the technology going on. Matter of fact, he was helping me this week. Thank you, Jason. The next one is probably the best teacher that's ever been in Darlington High School. Oh, that's mine. Never mind. Um, the other one is my wife. She's probably the best at the middle school. Shane, this is your wife's Carrie. Carrie's not here, is she? No, okay. Shane, greatest employee at McLeod. I didn't see Wanda this morning, but Wanda's usually at the door meeting and greeting us. Is she there now? Um, Pastor Darrell's going to take that to her. Miss Renee, I think she, she is at Latta. Um, Rebecca Langston, what school is she at now? Brockington, Brockington Elementary. Jonathan, I don't, I don't want to butcher their last name. Palacios, I probably still butchered it. China, her, his wife. <laughs> Mr. Naveen Dosapati, one of my math teachers. Come on, Naveen. Did we miss anybody? If you are an educator or if you um, work in the health care system. Anybody? All right, thank y'all. Real quick before we get going, I, I see a changing of the tide over the last couple of weeks, and you're going to hear today a plan to move into the future. And I even see it already, a changing of the tide out in the parking lot, a wonderful service of good attendance. I'm watching this attendance start to grow, and the, you'll see a thrust of where are we going to be over the next four months. When I ran my business this year ago, I used to say in my heart, sunned, sunned, and then September, October, November, December, and I would press hard to end the year strong. And that's what I do as a pastor too. So sun is right in front of us and the sun will deliver us into an amazing place. So um, that's the message today. It's time to move forward. Listen to me. Um, there's too many people right now living in the past. Well, only if it was like it used to be, then I'd be happy, peaceful, vibrant. There's some that are living in the future. Well, when it gets back to that, then I'll start being vibrant. And I'm saying, live in the present. Now is the time to be excited and vibrant about Jesus Christ. Now is the time to connect like never before and grow in faith. And yes, you probably noticed earlier this week I got my energy back. It was a long few weeks. Um, God is good. He is faithful. And some would say you got a little bit of the crazy back too. No extra charge. So get ready for a great year in front of us. Joe and Lisa, thank you for joining us. May God bless you. Um, Joe has given me a number of of emails this last six months and I've taken time and used them very helpful in your calls although I didn't receive calls while I was in Florida I knew you called I heard your voice bless you for that let's get ready for a great day good morning good to see everyone a few things on our prayer list um, I got a text this morning y'all please keep Miss Emily Hucks in your prayer. Um, she is not feeling well this morning. Miss Jones said that she she um, had a bad day and had a bad night last night. So y'all please keep her in your prayer. Also got a text that Mark Kelly's um, aunt had passed away. So y'all please keep Mark's family in your prayers. And again, remember our pastor, Pastor Frankie, and his mom. Uh, she has had a, a pretty good week. And we're glad of that, but still needs lots of prayers. So please, please keep her in your prayers. Um, 
any unspoken requests. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this day. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. Lord, as, as we recognize uh, our kids for their talent show, Lord, we thank you so much for their talent and their parents who, who spend time teaching them, Lord, about you. Father, we thank you for Evangelina and the others who have helped with our kids. Father, we pray for our children's ministry. Pray, God, that you would continue to use Evangelina and Mr. Jimmy and those who, who help out, Lord, to grow that ministry, Lord. Father, we thank you for our health care workers, for our educators. Father, we pray for them as this COVID continues, Lord, that you would keep them safe. Lord, we pray for our school. We pray for our students, our teachers, our administrators. Pray that you would bless them, Lord. Lord, for those that are sick, the names we've already called, I'm sure there are many others in our community, in our church. Father, I pray that you would touch them. Lord, I pray that you would be with those that help to take care for them. Strengthen them, Lord. Give them what they need to help as they care for those that are sick. Father, we pray for those unspoken requests. Whether it's a physical sickness, an emotional sickness, or whatever is going on, I pray that you would bless those that are in need this morning. Father, I pray for our music, for Shane and Elizabeth, Rebecca, as they bring the music this morning. Father, we pray for our pastor as he brings your word. Lord, hide him behind the cross. Give him the words that you would have us to hear. We love you. We thank you for all that you do. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bibles, we are in the book of Mark, chapter 5. If you're able, we ask that you would stand for the reading of God's word. It says, Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Everybody will remain standing. We're going to sing victory in Jesus.
Let me tell you, I, I'm excited to see Shane up there with Elizabeth and Rebecca. Praise God. Um, next week, children, you can go with a children's church. Um, you can go, Tyson, if you like, with Evangelina, something special for y'all. And I want you to think now about um, one of the things I'm doing is, is to sort of expand back so this church service inside will start having um, another song added to it, getting back to where we used to be. Um, the outside service, I'm going to wait on that purely for heat reasons and, and timeliness of that. So be in prayer. As If anybody missed last week's sermon, here's the outline if you want it. But I will preach this week's sermon. I got a call on Friday night. And you're going to see about moving forward, moving forward, living in the present, moving forward, seeing the greater glory of God. God is at, actively at work. And for those that uh, stay true to the call of Jesus Christ, I believe he's going to do some amazing things. I've been talking a lot about my life verse. Faith expressing itself. Faith working through love. Think about that. A life dedicated to faith. But let our faith express itself by our love walk. I got a call Friday night or a text actually. About 20 and a half years ago, I came, Pastor Daryl, got a job at Placid Lakes and, and they just, at that point, they just had a, you know, little old church and God grew that church amazingly and did amazing things there. But the very first person, I was walking down the block and I saw this man walking down the block and this man always had like a grumpy look on his face and he walked with a cane. And he lived right across the street, just one house over from us. I later found out his name was Jim. But at first I thought he was the man that if I walked up and talked about Jesus, he would hit me with his cane. Have you ever seen someone like that? Well, I decided to get out of my shyness and invite him to church. And the first time I invited him, I got nowhere. He didn't hit me, so I thought that was a victory. I invited him again, invited him again. He wanted very little to do. Invited his wife. His wife's name is Ruth. And I affectionately years ago started calling her Ruthie. I think to this day I'm the only one that calls her Ruthie all the time. I love Ruthie. And I, and I would talk to Ruthie and reach out. And she started coming to church. She was a strong believer in Jesus Christ. She was in the neighborhood but needed a church to reach out with God's love. And she became part of the church. And I would visit her husband and, and I didn't get anywhere. Then her husband, he had Huntington disease, which is a, a, a disease that over time takes away your a muscle's ability to perform. And he was in the nursing home, got out of the hospital. I went there and I visited him and didn't get very far. Went back the next week and visited him. Faith expressing itself through love. We can tell people we have faith, but if we don't love them, they won't receive it. A week later, I visited with him and, and he grew a little warmer to me. And then one day I had the strength in Christ to say, Jim, what do you understand it takes for someone to go to heaven? He didn't know the way. He, he could tell you the Christmas story. He could tell you the Easter story. But like many in this world, he would rely on being good enough to go to heaven. And like my life was his life, it wasn't real good through the early years. And I shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with him. At this point, he was already losing the ability to talk real well. He said, what do you think, Ruth? And Ruth says, Jim, that's your decision. I can't make that decision for you. He looked at me when I asked him to turn his life over to Christ. And he said, yeah, I want to. And he gave his life to Christ. He got out of the hospital. At that time, he was still able to walk. And he started coming to church. Now, Jim, as uh, the disease took over, he, um, he sang a lot like I do. Not real good, but he made up for that by being loud. And in the middle of church, he would sing the hymns and sing them loud. And I used to watch Ruthie. And she would say, shh, Jim, shh, Jim, shh, Jim. And then one day I said, enough of that. I went over, I said, stop, Ruthie. Let him sing and let him sing loud. He loves Jesus that saved his soul. 
He was at church every Sunday. He debilitated down his abilities to walk, and we built a wheelchair ramp at his home. A deacon would go over there, Brother Joe, every Sunday morning and get Jim, bring him to church because it was too much for Ruthie. And he would be at church every Sunday. It was hard for him to get dressed. Eventually his wife had to help him quite a bit. It was hard for him to get in the wheelchair. It was hard for him to get out of the wheelchair in the car. It was hard to get out of the car in the wheelchair and get in church. But he was there and he was singing and he was singing loud and he would worship the Savior. Twenty and a half years ago, a number of years later, I did his funeral. I got to know his daughter and his two boys. I already knew Ruthie well. She would often go visiting with me. Through the years, I've stayed close to Ruthie. Friday night, I got a text. And this is why I encourage you to live your life by faith and express it in love continuously. Twenty-something years ago, I reached out in love. Friday night, I got a text from her daughter who lives in California. And says, Ruthie's had a stroke and an aneurysm. She's in a nursing home. But she wanted you to know she loves you. I've been with her husband's funeral and both her boys' funerals. I don't know what the future will bring. I don't know if I'll go back to Florida. I know she has a pastor there that can do a fine job. But 20 years later, she wanted her pastor, Daryl, to know she loves me. Anybody say amen? Live your life in the present and share love. You will build relationships. 20 years later, people won't forget the love you shared. They'll forget the messages I preached, but they won't forget the love. As we are now moving forward, I'm going to give you three C's, and you have it here. The Lord spoke to my heart about the three C's, and Cindy helped me develop it better. And if you go outside in the natural there, these things are great. I used it all morning. Stay in the present. Stay concerned. We have concerns, and I'm going to teach you in a little bit how to give your concerns to Jesus and take his concerns on. Don't leave a void. If you give him the concerns and don't fill your heart with the things that concern Jesus Christ, those concerns like a demons will come right back. Give him your concerns. Give him your troubles. Give him your worries. And then fill your heart with the things that concern Jesus Christ. And that's people. Go love people. Get your life full of loving on people, your family. Love the Lord more. Speak to God more. Pray in the morning. Pray at night. Pray throughout. Praise God. Love people. Spread the gospel and watch what happens. Your concerns, God's got them. Transfer your concerns to God and take on his concerns. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. All these things will be given to you. And then go there. Get connected. Now is the time not to be disconnected. Our society is getting disconnected. And I'm telling you, many of church life are now disconnected from their church and from prayer life and from God. And the devil's at work. But it's time for us. I've never, it's so good to be so connected. Live in the present. Be connected. And then be committed. Because one thing the troubles of life will want to do is to break the commitment of God's children. But not in my house, amen? See the word today. Get excited. See the seas. You're going to see it next week too in the message. I've already got about a month in my brain. Let's go to the word of God now. Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. We see he crossed back over the sea. A great multitude is everywhere. He went across the sea just for the man who had demonic influence on his life. Jesus cast him out. There goes the swine. They're in them over the sea to death. And remember I talked about those demonic spirits. They didn't die with the swine. They're going to go out and see who they can torment. But not the child of God. We have Jesus. 
Jesus went back over to sea, and all of a sudden, where Jesus is at, people have come to him from every direction. They come to him when the man's hand wouldn't stretch out, and Jesus healed them. They sought the physician. They came to him when they were seeking a teacher, and Jesus taught them about the kingdom of God. They came to him when the storm came, and Jesus calmed the storms. They all sought Jesus for a hundred different reasons, just like you are today. And God is God Almighty. And now he went back to the other side. And wherever Jesus goes, and he's coming to you, and he's right here, he's got a purpose and he's got a will. Trust him. Take your concerns to Christ. And I've learned I can take a specific concern. There's power in prayer. I can speak to him like a good daddy. Oh, Father, don't you know this burdens me? And that's exactly what happened in verse 22. And behold, when God says, and behold, he's like, and take a closer look at this. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus. Now, a ruler of the synagogue, they, from the synagogue, they're not the biggest supporters of Jesus Christ. But he probably either saw firsthand or was told of this man that heals. And when a crisis came into his life, his daughter of 12 years old is about dead. That's when a crisis became his treasure because he needed the physician of Jesus Christ. Someone told him about the great teacher that's also a physician. I don't think he had faith of the Redeemer yet, but God's not done with him. Amen? Amen. Where there's one seeking Jesus Christ, God has a deeper blessing to give those who are connected and committed when you go to Him with your concerns. And when He saw Him, He fell at His feet and begged Him earnestly. That's our prayer life. I, and I know some people, I command this to happen. I command this. And it's like they come to God like they're commanding God. And, and I'm not going to get on that too much, but I'm saying I'd rather go and beg my, my Lord and my Master to move. Fall at his feet. He is God. I am a child and I'm in need. When your heart is broken, you fall at the feet of the one who has the answers. Begged him earnestly. Here's he's going to transfer his concerns. My little daughter, his crisis is about to become his treasure. What's your crisis? What's your concern? I have learned any crisis that brings me to the feet of Jesus, later I look back and say, that was my treasure. I can see things through the eyes of faith. Why are we watching the world through the eyes of the flesh? She's at the point of death. Come and lay your hand on her that she may be healed. Note. He's seeking the physician. And she will live. So Jesus went with him. And a great multitude followed and thronged. The crowd, the crowd is getting more. It's getting more. This man, wherever he's at, something happens. Miracles are happening left and right. And I imagine him sitting there saying, Okay, Jesus is with me. We're going. Everything's going to be okay. He had a specific concern, but you got to realize people have concerns all around you, and it's not about you. If you make life all about you, you are going to be a very frustrated, grumpy person. Now, a certain woman, and all of a sudden, this is neat. I'll preach on a certain woman next week. A certain woman comes a daughter. That's next week. It's kind of funny sometimes when I preach. I have next week's in my brain, and I start preaching that this week, but I'll try not. And she suffered many things, and life often gets interrupted. <laughs> Talking about the last six months getting interrupted. When life gets interrupted, you need to get connected deeper. If you're not careful, you will get disconnected with God, disconnected with His church. And that's a hard life to live. One of the thrusts over the next four months 
is to reach out with those over the last four months that have become disconnected. Come home, come home. Let's live in the present. Let's move forward. We'll still have outside church. If that's what you're comfortable, we're going to have inside church. Get connected in prayer life. One of the things I'm thankful about Wednesday night coming back inside, because with the heat, I have to minimize how long it is. I can keep you all night if you're inside. <laughs> but one thing we've missed is fellowship and prayer. It's going to start at 6.30. We'll go live at 7. And we're going to be praying. And we're going to fellowship. We're not going to do the dinners yet. That'll come, Lord willing. But we're going to pray. And we're going to pray. And we're going to pray. At 4 o'clock tonight, we're going to come. And we're going to pray. And we're going to pray. And we're going to pray. Do you believe in the power of prayer? Live in the presence and pray. It was not too long ago, eight months ago, he was at first service. He came to me and him and his wife had a major crisis. And their crisis became their treasure because he was on the outskirts of the church as far as really connected. And I said, I want you to do this. You want me to pray for you? I will. But you show up tonight at 4 o'clock in the prayer closet, and we're going to lay hands on you. We're going to anoint you with oil, and we're going to pray over you and your wife, and we're going to believe something major is going to happen. Six months later, they got blessed more than they could ever. They got double for their trouble. Anybody say amen? That's the God I know. When I was searching for a church a year and a half ago, I got double here and then some. Anybody say amen? Do you remember one year ago to the month, Shelly and I were trying to buy property where we could have all the different variety of things, hunting and, and the fish and then our horses, and the property fell through. I was so discouraged. In Mechanicsville, there's not a whole lot of property to buy. People like to buy and own it and keep it. <laughs> and I don't blame them because I'm keeping my property now. And then all of a sudden, we fell into the property we bought. I got more than double for my trouble. Anybody say amen? Sometimes that original discouragement even will become your treasure because God's going to show you a greater glory. So there he is with his daughter, sick. Jesus, I need you now to move or else this is going to get worse. And all of a sudden, what do you do when you see somebody else gets the blessing that you're praying for? Will you have envy? Will you be jealous? Will you have a spirit to say, well, they got theirs, but I got nothing? You see, that's what the devil wants. For you to start living self-centeredly instead of praising God for somebody else's blessing. You know God can bless somebody else and still is big enough not to forget you? It's just not his timing yet. The lady he blessed, her faith made her well for eternity. But Jairus still had some problems about eternity to deal with. And that's what God's going to deal where the need's the greatest. You see, sometimes you need a physician. But if you don't know the Redeemer, a physician can't help you. Anybody say amen? God's got a bigger lesson for him. So he said to her daughter at the end of that part of the message, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Be healed. Verse 35. While he was still speaking. And that's sometimes the devil wants us to crack under the pressure. While somebody else is getting blessed. While you thought everything's going to work out and life got interrupted. You get worse news. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? You see, God was not working on him believing in a physician or a teacher. When death happens, you don't need a teacher. Teachers are wonderful. When death happens, you don't need a physician. Physicians are wonderful. But I don't know an earthly physician that can raise the dead. Anyone say amen? Take your concerns to Jesus and get connected. And be committed. Because when you hear the worst news you can think of, your commitment needs to go deeper. 
Sometimes things get worse before they get better. But that doesn't mean you lose faith. And it doesn't mean you stop living in love and show and expressing love. It means you double down on faith. And you be committed. I kicked off this church. Acts chapter 2. January. I, I could never envision the decisions I would have to make. And the changes we would all make. But let me read to you one of the key verses last January. That's so important today. Acts 2.42 and they continued steadfastly. When you're going through discouragement, it's time to say, I am going to be steadfast. Steadfast means I am unwavering, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. I am a child of Christ. I'm a child of God. Steadfastly continued in the doctrine. Nothing touches my soul like the word of God when I feel trouble. Anybody say amen? Nothing goes deeper. Nothing penetrates further. Fellowship. Over the last few weeks, and for a week or two, I was a little disconnected. A number of people called and left me messages and says, Pastor, you don't have to call me back. Because there's sometimes that you struggle in your soul, but God's got you. But the fellowship that reaches out and shares love means everything. Amen? Fellowship. Fellowship. Plug into the body of Christ. There are times when others struggle that you are the fellowship, the cause, the cards, the love that makes a difference you'll never imagine. Steadfastly in fellowship, the breaking of bread, the remember the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and in prayers. Because Jarius now needs to know. He just heard the worst news. That is not the time to break away. That's the time to go deeper with Jesus Christ. And Christ will take you there. Why trouble the teacher any further? Why trouble the physician? But Jarius, go to the Redeemer. You're going to learn that there is a Redeemer. And that's where God wants to take you. You could have a teacher and you have a physician. But if you don't have the Redeemer, you're not ready, Pilgrim. This week as I was sitting by the cows and watching, God put on my heart the three C's and the greater glory of God. God put it on my heart the Pilgrim's prog Progress, if I pronounce it right. If not, just pretend I did. And here he is, he gets rid of his burdens and the heavy load and he gives it to the Lord. But he's got that final river to cross and that's death. You see, the physician and the teacher, they're not going to cross that river with you. But the great Redeemer, that's an earthly teacher and physician. But knowing the Redeemer, which is only Jesus Christ, will take you through that river of death. And going through that river of death, you can have peace. And when you have a beloved one that's in your family that dies, and they cross that river, and you know they're now in heaven. You know your Redeemer lives. Amen. And you can have peace even with the worst news. And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, that his daughter died, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. Only believe. Don't be afraid. God's got double for your trouble. You're about to see the greater glory of God. And the Lord took me on a little journey with Stephen, the first martyr. 
And as he was being martyred and killed, what people would call the worst thing that ever happened, I think was the greatest treasure he ever experienced when he saw Jesus, when he looked up. Anybody say amen? God revealed a greater glory to him that nothing on this earth could compare. And God's about to re reveal a greater glory. You sought the position but what you needed was the Redeemer, not only for your daughter, but for yourself. He says, only believe. Only. Don't be afraid. The fear of the circumstances of life are only going to bring about strife and tension and anger. He says, only believe. Watch the peace that will come. And he permitted no one to fall, follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a torment. And those who wept and wailed loudly. Now it's an interesting term that I don't use. But I see it everywhere in society today. What it means is a violent, confused, noisy commotion and disturbance of a crowd. How many of y'all think you see that every time you turn on the news? You come into my house, you see love and peace. I pray yours is like that. Don't allow the emotions of the crowd to change your steadfastness and faith and your love for God and others. Because that's what happened in that house. They were seeing things through the flesh and not through the spirit. Watch what Jesus does. And when he came in, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? I believe God would say that to a lot of Christians today. Why are you so afraid? Why are you so worried? Why are you staying up at night and not sleeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. I like that. I like sleeping. I like to take a nap. Anybody say amen? I like to go to bed at night. Before I go to bed, I pray. I like that. Then I go to sleep. I like that. Sleeping is rebuilding my body. Sleeping is rebuilding my muscles. They get tired. I'm old. Er. Sleeping restores my mind. Sleeping restores my faith. There are things I'll be concerned about and pray about, and I wake up in the morning, and they just seem to work out every time. But Jesus says, look at death, I have faith. They're just sleeping. When you look at death in the flesh, they're dead. But when you look at death through the eyes of Christ, they're just sleeping. Don't you know mama woke up in heaven, healed? Anybody say amen? amen. Why do we look? Because we're all going to cross that river one day as a pilgrim. We're going to go home. And our home's in heaven. We don't have to fear death. But you might die. No, I will. I'm pretty sure. I watched the statistics. But I won't die, I just sleep and I wake in heaven and I'm alive because I have eternal life. You see, what Jairus needed to know was not a physician, it was the Redeemer. Because the Redeemer is the physician. And he has an eternal healing. And the greater glory of God will be revealed. One of the most beautiful things I saw, and I heard my stepfather say it, when I told mom about heaven, and listen to this, I'm saying this by faith, but I saw it with my eyes. Mom, who hadn't talked to me in six months because of Alzheimer's, took too much of a toll. And I sang to her, as you have heard me tell you, I'll fly away. And I told her in heaven, no more pain, no more suffering. And mama, who hadn't responded in weeks, Hooked her head up a little bit out of the bed and went, yes, 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 yes. 
There's something that the word of God does that goes to the soul. And he came in. Why the commotion, weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. This world may ridicule us for our faith. That's on them. Won't change me. When he had put them all outside. And some of y'all right now need to take that verse and make it your life verse. Because until you do, you're not going to have peace. We don't have to validate everybody's negativity. We don't have to accept it. We need to put it outside. Hey, I love you. But if all you're going to do is say gloom and doom and discouragement and negativity, I'm going to set some boundaries in my life. And if you're going to be that negative and not walk by faith, I'm going to have to put you outside my inner circle. Do you hear me? Because I walk by faith and not by sight. And Jesus put them on the outside. Maybe where that negativity needs to be put out of right now is your very own heart. I'm kicking it out. And I'm replacing it with faith. Listen, sometimes people as a pastor write me letters or say something to me, or text me, negative things. Imagine that, right? You've never had that, have you, Pastor? There are times that I don't write back. Is it because I don't love them? No, I do. It's because I'm not going to validate that. Anybody say amen? Amen. You see, when you validate the negativity, you get in that cycle. You get in a cycle. Now, if I just forgot to text you, I'm not talking about you. (laughs) Disclaimer. But why validate and join in a circle of pain? Say, hey, my circle of faith is over here. Come join me. Just a little side note. Big sermon right there. And he took the father and the mother of the child, those that are seeking Jesus Christ. And those that were with him and entered where the child was lying. He took the child by the hand and said, little girl, I say to you, arise. There, going back to the original language, is saying raised from the dead, just like Lazarus. Immediately the little girl rose, arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age. And they were overcome with great amazement. You see, he stayed. He took his concerns and fell at the feet of Jesus Christ. He stayed connected even when the discouragement came. He stayed committed when he heard the worst thing he could ever imagine hearing. And God has promises. I call it double for your trouble. Studying the Bible, I'm not speaking out. But the greater glory of God will be revealed. Amen? When I spoke the last words, I spoke to my mom, wordless of faith. She's like, yes, yes. I saw the greater glory of God revealed. She was ready for heaven. She knew the Redeemer. That which man fears was God's great healing. I'm asking you right now what are your concerns? Everyone's different. Everyone is different. Go trade them. Give them Jesus and get a good night's sleep. Eat lunch and even get a nap and be at peace. Amen? Trade them. God, I'm giving them to you. 
I'm trading my sorrows. Think about it. And I'm going to take on what you're concerned about. And that's people in my life. I can go love people more. I can go witness. I can be a part of the prayer time. I'm going to take on those things that concern you. Because I know, Jesus, you took on the things that concerned me. And I'm going to stay connected like never before. My prayer life, my personal life, my devotional life, my meditation life, sitting in the field, watching the cows. I can meditate on the word of God and God will speak and open up things and I can understand. I'm connected. And I'm committed. Even though the worst by man's eyes may happen, I'll see it by faith. She's just sleeping. She's going to raise up in heaven. And one day so will I. As I do the invitation, I'll ask the singers to come forward now and the musicians. I'm asking you, have you brought your concerns to Jesus? I want you to think about maybe financial, maybe family, maybe physical concerns. But I want you to bring another concern to Jesus Christ. Have you brought him your sin and asked him to forgive you? Have you confessed your sins to Jesus? He died on the cross that we can release that. We can trade our sins for his righteousness. The righteousness of God in you. Christ in you. I give you my sins because you died on the cross for them. I ask you right now, I believe you rose from the grave. I believe you love a sinner like me and I want you to forgive my sins and I confess and more than confess, I repent. I'm not going to be like the dog that returns to the vomit. I'm going to repent and I'm going to live for you, Jesus. I give you my sins. I give you my soul. Have you given Christ your all? Do you know you have eternal life? Do you know for certain that death for you is only taking a little sleep? That your sins are forgiven and you're going to wake up in heaven? I do. His concerns stay connected. Stay committed. You might need a church home. We're right here to receive you. Let's stand. We'll close this church in prayer. I'm going to put on my mask and encourage you. If you have prayer needs, come on forward.
Dr. Joe and Lisa, come to the altar and close us in prayer, please. Thank you for joining us. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for the day that you have granted to us and for the opportunity and privilege to be gathered here in your house. Lord, I thank you that you have prepared the heart of your servant today to bring us the word that we needed to hear. And I'm sure that so many others who are listening via television or computer today, whatever their means, that they needed to hear as well. And so I thank you, Lord, that your servant has been obedient I thank you that he has listened to the words you've given him. I thank you for the vision that he is casting for these, your people. And Lord, in a, a way that I'm sure Pastor Darrell would understand, I thank you for the cows. And for the opportunity of a peaceful place to meditate and to hear the word of God. And so I pray, Lord, that those cows that continue to be a blessing to him and to this church and to so many others who will be touched because of the wisdom and the truth and the vision that you give your servant to lead your people. Lord, I thank you for the comfort that you have provided for Pastor Darrell in these days. And I know that you've encouraged and strengthened his heart. So along his mom today all of us who are believers can look toward heaven and when asked if that will be our eternal dwelling place we can say yes 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 and we say it to the glory of God in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ